our second special award tonight is for inclusion. And I came up here and I, and I shared a Bible verse. I'm very proud of my Christian faith. And many of us in our Pacific communities, we, you know, we shared that special connection to our atua, and, and, our, and that's a Christian connection. But we as Pacific people have always been diverse. We've always had many different faiths in our space. We've always had many different genders, sexualities, and ways of being. And I know this, that, that area sometimes is a bit of a difficult area in our communities, and it's something that we as a community are working on, which is great. And the next person who we're about to give the Supreme Award for Inclusion to has been doing this. So I want to invite forward our board member, David. David? Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> On the other side. Who's going to present this award? Um, and can I get another drum roll, please, gentlemen? <laughs> and this award goes to Chanel Love. So Chanel was born in Fiji and migrated to Aotearoa at the age of 14. Though they are of Aitutak, Aike and Gurume descent, Chanel is passionate about creating spaces for many intersections of the queer community, such as Takatapui community, immigrant communities and people of colour. Chanel co-founded the Conversion Therapy Action Group to, towards a ban on conversion therapy and been working alongside Ministry of Education to make Aotearoa a more inclusive place. And, your main interests <laughs> rely, on, rely on decolonizing Aotearoa so that we can all be our true selves. And you are making an equitable place in Aotearoa. So Fafatai for what you do and how hard it is to carry what you do, but for what you do. Thank you. Nisan Bula Vinakana Marama Kinaturanga Vakina Vikim Nikad and Asematika Maina Porokaramo. I wear my queerness very loudly. I'm often told, yes, queen, you dress well. And I say, yes, I spent about 10 years hiding in the closet. But I have no choice but to do it because I cannot be invisible while my people are being erased. I was born in Fiji, and Fijians are known to be some of the kindest people, but that kindness comes with an exception. Two years ago, on the International Day Against Transphobia, a body of a trans woman was found lying in a pool of blood in the capital of Fiji. A year before that, a gay couple was attacked and left to bleed. I was afraid of growing up in Fiji. So when I moved to Aotearoa, I escaped a country that was ready to kill me and a government ready to justify it. But the people close to my heart at home do not have the luxury of being who they are safely. My people in Tonga, Samoa, Cook Islands are considered criminals. I cannot be free until all my people are free. In this endless cycle of homophobia and transphobia, there is only one real winner, the colonizer. The white gays got gay marriage and they got over it, but indigenous queer people have been left to fight our own battles. If we as Pacific people uphold colonial systems of bigotry, a day will come when we will cease to exist. And that day, the dreams of our ancestors would be crushed. Every time I speak to a Pacific crowd, there's a voice in my head that says that no one is listening and no one is caring. But tonight, I hope that voice is wrong. In the summer of 2017, I was volunteering at the Middlemore Hospital. When a priest walked up to me and he said he wanted to pray, and I said, what? And he said he could pray my gay away. I refused. So he looked at me and he said, it's hot, but you know what's hotter? Hell. 34 years ago, homosexuality was a crime. Seven years ago, gay marriage was not a social reality. And to this day, it is completely legal to torture people to change their sexuality in the name of conversion therapy. Praying is a beautiful thing, but no one should be praying to die. I hear from young people who say that they pray to God to heal them or kill them. To heal them or kill them, conversion therapy has ended many innocent lives and it continues to do so in New Zealand because our government has failed to ban it. 
I get told that this young generation is getting weirder with time. That is not true. Old people like me don't exist because they are dead. Maybe it was the AIDS pandemic, or the fact that homosexuality was punishable by death, or conversion therapy. My community dies every day and I'm tired of putting up with it. I'm not asking for your approval and I'm not going to beg for it. I demand my rights. I am human and so is every other queer person, so find it in yourself to let us live. Our stories are associated with pain and suffering, but I remember that our ancestors were able to laugh in the face of the colonizer while enduring the pain of colonization. Queer people have inherited that fight. As a kid, I was made to feel that there was something wrong with me. But I have grown and I have learned that there is nothing wrong with who I am, but there are a lot of things wrong with this colonized world. We are powerful because we have survived. I am queer and I always have been and I always will be. So tonight, the decision is yours. Will you be a colonizer or an ancestor? And this award, this award is for every black, indigenous, queer person of color who has held it down for the queer community, especially for our indigenous trans women. The LGB would not exist without the T. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>